So this tutorial is on optimizing the layer structure of a perovskite solar cell. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the, the ability of it to harvest photons. So by the end of this tutorial, what you'll be able to do is simulate a perovskite solar cell and then automatically adjust the layers and find out what the optimum structure is for light harvesting. Now there's two um, problems effectively when you're trying to optimize a solar cell. There's the electrical problem, which um, depends on things like material mobility and recombination rate and things like that. And um, that will dictate how many absorbed photons reach the contacts. And then on the other hand, there's the electrical, there's the optical problem, sorry, there's the optical problem, um, which effectively dictates where photons get absorbed in the device. And, you know, the, sort of, are, are, are the photons being absorbed in this perovskite layer or are they all, bit, um, which could be, which be useful or are they being absorbed at the back of the device? So what this tutorial is going to focus on is going to focus specifically on um, optimizing the, um, the layer structure for photon harvesting. So we're going to neglect the electrical problem in this, in this little tutorial. We'll look at optimizing the electrical parameters later, but this is just on um, looking at designing a device for optimum uh, photon harvesting. And the nice thing about doing this is um, uh, refractive indices and absorption uh, values are very, very easy to get hold of. So if you've got those, you can very, very quickly um, understand what the optimum structure for your device could be from the light harvesting perspective and where, where, charge ca where, where um, photons are effectively being wasted. So um, this, this example we're going to be looking at here comes from new simulation uh, scripting and fitting. So this is a new little uh, set of uh, simulations I've put in here called scripting and fitting. And it's, um, this particular simulation we're looking at is called Optical Layer Optimizer uh, Perovskite PV. So um, we could just run the simulation um, and um, you know, just, just like normal. But uh, what I've added is if you go to automation and you go to parameter scan, um, this enables you to scan various or systematically vary, vary parameters um, of this um, device. And I've put an example here called optimizer. Now, what uh, we're going to do, so I'll just, I'll just keep this on the, on the top here, um, we're going to change the layer thickness of, so it says that epitaxy perovskite, so if we look at the layers, that's uh, perovskite there, so this layer here, we're going to change the dy of this object, so the, the, the height, and we're also going to change the, um, the, t the thickness of the TiO2 here. And we're going to change this um, from 300 nanometers to 500 nanometers in steps of 10 nanometers, and the same with this layer, the TiO2 layer, um, except uh, we're going to go from 100 to 300 in steps of 10 nanometers. Now, if you wanted to, just get rid of this, if you wanted to um, add another layer in here as well to optimize, you could just click the plus button and then add another layer. So I'll just add another layer. So we'll just go optimize here, um, epitaxy, uh, say, I don't know, the spiro layer, and then dy. So that's selected the spiro layer, and we could say, okay, values, I don't know, let's say from 10 to 50 in steps of 10. So that would optimize all three layers. Um, I'm not going to do that here because it'll just take slightly longer. Um, but uh, so I'll just delete that now, but you can sort of play with these parameters as you as you like. So I'm going to delete that row. So I'm now going to click run scan. But before I do that, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about this scan window. So this scan window, um, I've discussed it um, at length in other videos. Um, and also it's uh, described in the manual here. So here's chapter 13 in the manual. So I've just described the parameter of the scan window sort of quite um, a lot it, previously. But the key new feature here is this fast optimizer button. So when, so when this is not depressed like this, um, it will run a normal parameter scan. So it'll say, you know, generate um, all the output um, from all the simulations. So um, for, for example, in this example here, it would generate, say, um, so how, how many how many uh, scans we're going to do here? So that'd be 500 minus that's 200. So that'd be that'd be 20 scans there, and so, so that's another 20. So that'd be 400 simulations, and it would store all those 400 simulations um, in this output file, and you could sort of examine the, all, so all all the parameters of these simulations. So you could look at the JV curves independently. You could look at the charge carry densities. You could really dig into these simulations. But unfortunately, that would generate a lot of files um, and it would sort of generate a lot of output. You, you don't always want to examine simulations in detail. So when you click this fast optimizer button, what it will do, what this scan window will do, is it won't actually store any of these simulations to disk. It will just extract key figures of merit and store them in a table. 
So just to see how this works, let's just click Run Scan and um, we get this little win window up and it's uh, chugging through doing the optical simulations uh, for this. So it's just chugging away, it'll just take a second. And you can see also there's the dots here, each one of these dots represents the simulations it, that it's doing. You can probably hear my CPU spooling up. And it's finished. Now, if you notice, this directory here's output is actually um, empty. Um, and usually that'd be full up with lots of files. But if we open this directory, so here it's home rod desktop uh, test two. So I'm, I'm just going to open that. Uh, desktop test two. So in, in Windows, you could open this in, 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 uh, in uh, Windows Explorer or something like that. So this is the simulation directory. This is where we've saved our simulation. Um, and um, in here, we've got this file called optimizer. So and this is a CSV file, so it says optimize output CSV. So if we open this, now by default, um, this is going to open in LibreOffice, but you can open this in Excel or whatever you want to do. And what we see here is that we've got the first two columns A and B. So we've got um, epitaxy layer two, epitaxy layer one, DY. Now, if we go back to the scan window, um, here are the, so we've got epitaxy perovskite, well, perovskite, is layer two. So if we look at the layer editor, whoop, there's a layer editor, it's like layer zero, one, two. So that's the Proskite layer. Um, and then, where's the camera doing on? There we go. Um, and we've got layer one, which is this, this TIO2 TI layer. So these are the thicknesses of the layers it's changing. You see it's basically systematically changing the layer thicknesses by 10 nanometers. So you've got all possible combinations there of all, all the layer thicknesses. And then we've got the left-hand side, um, what we've got is we've got the, it says layer zero, so um, light frac photon generation. So this is the fraction of photons that are being generated in layer zero, layer one, layer two, um, layer three, layer four. And again, I'll just show you the, um, I'll just show you the layer editor. So this is layer zero, one, two, three, four. Um, I might put the names in, in the file eventually, but I haven't managed to do that yet. And this second column here, so that's the fraction of photons which are absorbed. This, this second column here is the theoretical maximum uh, JSC current that this layer could provide. Now, if we go to the perovskite layer, so, th so this, this would be at short circuit with no recombination and very, very, very high mobility. Um, now, obviously, this is the sort of the absolute maximum case, so the current would be lower than this in reality, um, but this helps you pick the layer structure that's um, effectively the best at absorbing, um, just neglecting the electrical problem. So here we can see this is the current, and this current here is in, it's all SI, so this is um, amps meters to the minus two. Um, so um, we can see that there's how much um, current is generated in this perovskite layer as we change the, the, the layer thicknesses. So what you could do, and I, I'm not going to do this, uh, because I am not an expert at Excel. But what you could do is you could sort of select this column and this column, and you could, or you could select all the columns, and you could sort by use, um, using the sort function um, the sort of the, the most. Um, should I try and do this? Okay, I'm, I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk uh, my Excel skills and, and try and try to sort uh, sort this spreadsheet. What's this say? Uh, mm. Sort ascending. Mm. I'm not sure that's helpful. Ah, there we go. Now, can we sort ascending? So, no, sort descending. There we go. So, um, you'll be able to do this on Excel too. And I, I think I've done this correctly, but my, my Excel skills are not uh, what, they, what they should be. Um, so, effectively, um, this is picked out the layer that produces the because we've sorted by 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 the, by the current of the proskite layer, um, and it's picked out the um, the layer that's got generates the most the most photon the most um, uh, charge carriers, um, and in this case it's fairly obvious because the perovskite is really absorbing, um, 
and, and the answer was given us is effectively got a nice thick perovskite layer, a very, very thin um, layer one as a TI2, and that would give you the most, the most current. Um, but when you're doing um, sort of more devices, or if you're trying to optimize more layers, the answer may not be super obvious like this because um, you'll get sort of reflection, refraction, re reflection of, of various layers, you'll get sort of standing mode set up. So um, that's how to pick the most uh, efficient structure uh, for your for your device. Um, so that's it really. Um, so I hope people find that useful. Um, and at least now when you're making a device, you'll be able to find out how far from the sort of the optimum conditions it is uh, for photo absorption. So I think I will leave it there. Oh no, oh, one, one more thing I'll say. Um, so the, the manual here, um, I've written some words on the manual. So this is this is all in the automation section of the manual. So chapter, um, the chapters move around, but you know, automation and scripting it's called. So this describes the, the parameter scan window that you might want to go out first. Um, and then this is the multi-parameter device optimizer. So this whole process is described here um, and it's fairly straightforward. So yeah, any questions, shoot me an email um, and I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for your attention.